Hello YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, the holidays are here. And for some of you out there who celebrate during this time of year, this is a time for uh, gift giving. And for a lot of you, you use it as an excuse to buy yourself something. So uh, in both cases, this video is for you. <laughs> and, uh, or even if it's none of those, you'll probably want to see these anyway. These are the items that I would certainly have on my, on my Christmas list, and I'm gonna go ahead and share them with you. Let's go ahead and get into it now. If you're new to the channel, be sure to uh, hit that uh, bell and that sub button and uh, that notification bell at sub button and uh, subscribe so that uh, YouTube knows that you like the content and uh, that way they'll recommend the channel to other fish keepers. If you haven't done that, it'd be very appreciated if you did. Thank you so much in advance. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. I got a, a, just a, a bunch of, of uh, items here that I just started looking around the fish room and I said, okay, what, what would I not want to be without? And uh, let's start with something real basic, a very strong flashlight. In this case, this is a um, this is a Shadow Hawk. It's a rechargeable, tremendous amount of lumens. I'm not going to flash it into the camera. Very powerful. And the reason I like these is you can inspect things like filters and hosing connections, things of that nature. You can determine where um, a very small small leak or an air bubble might be occurring or things of that nature. So always have a very good flashlight in your fish room. So. Uh, Item number one, a good, strong flashlight. Item number uh, two, and if you watched my recent video about having to separate out the dragon blood because he was just being very mean and aggressive, a very good um, place that you can put a fish that isolates or separates him from the rest of the population, from the rest of the stock. And in this case, what I have here is a, um, a Zeiss breeder box. And I'll show you the box that it came in. This is the Zeiss breeder box. And this one I, I, I picked up from the Aquarium Co-op. It's a great breeder box. If you saw it in the video, it's uh, very clear, very clear to see through. So you can really pick up what's going on with the fish. You can, you can hook it onto the tank using this, but if you don't have the kind of tank that would allow you to do this, and by the way, you can adjust the height. So depending on your water level, you can uh, kind of move it up and down. But if you don't have a tank that allows you to do this, it also has suction cups. So you can also attach uh, a suction cup attachment to it that will uh, you know, put it on the side of the tank without being hung on anything. Because the top is, is sealed shut and it's pretty tight, the fish is not going to escape. Even if it were to detach from the aquarium wall, the fish isn't gonna get out and kill, the, kill its uh, tank mates while, while you're sleeping. This is not a quarantine, okay, where you'd separate out the fish. You're still circulating water through the bottom and sides. You're still getting a lot of water circulation. So filtration is occurring, oxygenation is occurring, and, uh, but the fish is just separated from the rest of the population. This is really a must have if you're a um, African cichlid or if you have any kind of uh, breed of fish that from time to time you wanna separate out, I would strongly encourage you to consider this Zeiss breeder box. And um, it does come, it does come with the suction cups. So you don't need to have, you don't have to use the hook system. You can see the, uh, different suction cup and other attachments here that come with it, as well as the uh, large suction cups. I don't use the suction cups because my, my aquariums are the type that you can hang, you can hang on to. You know, they just hang, the box just hangs on there and I've used it on several occasions. It sort of saved my bacon. So um, another item that I highly recommend and uh, that you put on your, on your gift list and, uh, or just give it to yourself, <laughs> is a, um, 
a lithium or battery charged uh, bubbler. In the event of a power outage, I've said this in many videos, what, what ultimately can kill the fish is a lack of oxygen. So if you can have something like this that you keep plugged in and inside the tank, this is just one example, it's a cobalt rescue air, cobalt rescue air. And uh, these are sort of the gold standard, uh, runs for 72 hours, 72 hours. So if you have a power outage, this will keep, uh, this, this will keep the surface of your aquarium breaking up so that the bad gas gets out and oxygen gets in. So um, they also are made by, if you want to go a less expensive route, but one that I think is is of uh, comparable in quality, I was sent I was sent a few of these from a company called Regugu, and you can let me go ahead get this organized here. So Regugu, this company here, also makes them, and you can check out their website. They're less expensive, and they have a lithium battery that'll go for at least, I believe, 48 hours. So um, you keep them plugged in somewhere. Sometimes you can just leave them running in the aquarium, and in the event of a power outage, the battery takes over and just keeps running for 48 hours. So if you're away, you're out of town for a day, and uh, there's a power outage, you don't really, you don't really have to worry. Your uh, your tank's going to be your tank's going to be okay. Your fish can be all right. Now, um, another thing that I'd recommend, and um, replace the, the cartridges that are recommended by the factory that you have to buy like every month, and instead buy cartridges like these. This one is a carbon infused filter cartridge. You would cut this to the shape that you need it to be in, and um, and you can get them in carbon, you can get them in just plain filter, you know, filter media. Uh, you can also get them uh, so that they um, reduce ammonia. They also have them so that they reduce phosphates. So you can get a variety of these and they are also available from, from Aquarium Co-op. That's where I got them. They'll save you a lot of money because when you, when you take them out, you just rinse them. You can rinse them in aquarium water, you can rinse them in tap, you know, depending how, what you're doing for your beneficial bacteria but you can just rinse them and drop them right back in and uh, they just last they just last forever. So uh, use, uh, buy those if you can't, uh, get a hold of those, get, get a hold of uh, some of those egg crate sponges. I'm real big on egg, egg crate sponges and cut those to shape. You can use those as well and they're, they're stiff enough so that you can slide them into a, uh, into a, a hang on back filter or cut them into the shape of the baskets of a of a canister filter and um, and you just rinse and reuse rinse and reuse and I've used them for years and um, I, I sold uh, a couple uh, filters back in California and they had had the uh, sponges uh, those egg crate sponges in them for four years and so never never had to replace just rinse and reuse so they save you a lot of money uh, I also suggest that you have a backup filter up in a cabinet somewhere. If you have uh, Sun Suns, I used to have an extra one, I'd cabinet cannibalize it, I'd use parts off of it if something went wrong. Uh, and um, you know, not a bad idea to have one that you can cannibalize, but um, a backup filter of some kind. If you're running with canisters, have, um, you know, have, a, uh, have a hang on backup in the closet that you can pull out, throw some of the canister filter media in it if the canister were to stop working. Now. If you can't afford a uh, canister as a backup for your canister, I do suggest that every year or so you, uh, you know, consider replacing the O-rings. These are O-rings. You can pick these up on uh, eBay, uh, Amazon, places like that. And what they are is that you just you just write you know you just type in the type of uh, you know the type of filter you have, and they send you the the O-ring that keeps the canister sealed. And uh, what I do is, uh, if I'm not having any problems at all and the O-ring looks really good, I'll lubricate it with some, uh, with some food grade silicone lubricant. This is a food grade silicone lubricant. There are many of them on the market. But uh, have some of this, have some of this, and, uh, and keep, you know, keep any, any gasket, any O-ring like this, anywhere in your in your uh, filter 
should be lubricated, uh, cleaned and lubricated uh, uh, every now and then and every year to, or maybe every two years depending on your, you know, use your judgment, but replace the O-rings. It'll save you a lot of heartache. The biggest problem people have with canister filters is that they, uh, the O-rings become cracked or they become flattened out in one area and, uh, and, and then you get a slow leak and it drives you crazy. That being said, uh, consider getting a water detector that uh, you can put your canister in a basket and then have a water detector that will sound an alarm if there's any, any moisture detected underneath the canister. They're inexpensive, I think between $10 and $20. You can pick them up on eBay. I think I have them listed at my Amazon store as well. So check them out there on my Amazon, amazon.com slash shop slash bed chart. All right. Um, another thing that you may want to consider, and this one was sent to me by the Aquarium Co-op. And this is a, uh, an auto feeder. And you know, all of us, you know, have friends that we trust, family members and things of that nature. But for some of us, you know, maybe you live in a remote area and you need to go away for three or four days. These apparently have been really tested by Corey and this is a, uh, an auto feeder that is pretty bulletproof and will not clog, will not, you know, will not fall into the tank and will not overfeed or underfeed your fish. So consider uh, an auto feeder that you can set for how much you want to feed and uh, that way you can go on vacation not worry that your fish are being uh, fed too much or too little or not at all. A couple more items on my list. A backup heater. Uh, heaters, sometimes they just stop working. And if you're lucky, if you're lucky, they just stop working. If you're not lucky, they, they uh, go crazy on you and they, uh, they, you know, they do odd things like blow up and do all kinds of crazy stuff, but very rare. You, know, you, hear the, you hear the horror stories and it might fill you with fear, but just realize those things are very, very rare. You know, one in a million. Of course, you hear about it. People love to spread bad news, but uh, it is very un un uncommon. But uh, have a backup heater, it's a good idea. And that being said, not a bad idea to also have a controller. This is a controller that you plug your heater into. And when the temperature, when the sensor that is inside the tank determines that your tank has reached the target temperature, it, it turns off, it turns off the electricity. So there's no way that the heater is going to overheat your fish. So uh, a controller, this one is an Inkbird. They run about, I don't know, anywhere from 30 to $50, I imagine, but very inexpensive and a very, very good investment. It'll give you a lot of peace of mind. You're not going to have to worry about your heater uh, going crazy on you. So those, those are the items. And uh, of course, there's a lot more test kits, uh, digital thermometers, uh, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of good things out there. You know, a lot of goodies that I can suggest. I list a lot of them at my Amazon store. Take a look if you want. And uh, if you use that link to go to Amazon, anything you get on Amazon, even outside of my store, helps support the channel. And uh, if you really want to support the channel, become a, a Patreon, a monthly Patreon member. Uh, membership started about three dollars a month on up, and you get uh, pre-releases of videos and special content that is uh, not available anywhere else. So uh, that's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern. That's 9 a.m. Pacific and noon Eastern. Hope to see you there. Great group of fish keepers. We get into some great discussions. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.